to get more of an understanding on how entrepreneurs think and what drives them to succeed, all we need to do is take a closer look at some of the country's biggest sporting names. In terms of this work that I've been doing around entrepreneurs, I've also realised that sports, the sports people are ten years ahead of us in terms of understanding this stuff. In terms of high-performing people, ten years ahead of it. And I've been working with some professors of high-performance in sports, and they've got a lot to teach us in business. And in terms of high-performing athletes, what we've identified, there's two things that they do. Two things, basically, that they do. High-performing athletes. Uh, ergo, high-performing entrepreneurs. High-performing, high-performing anybody. Two things. One is the visioning process I described, the picture of what success looks like, feels like, smells like. Yeah. So when I was interviewing the entrepreneurs to learn this stuff, to get this stuff, some of them would say, well, my vision is 20% return on capital in five years' time. <laughs> it's boring, it's like a mathematical thing, or arithmetic. Other people would say, well, I think I want to be a success in that. You know, I've got, a, I've got a few pictures of what it might look like. And the real flyers, the people who are going 20 million, 50 million, 100 million, 500 million, going ballistic, when you ask them about their vision, they come alive, they describe it in living colour, and the best ones would do this. They'd lick their lips because not only could they see it, feel it, smell it, they could taste it, what success looks like. So successful people have got this picture what it looks like. What do you think they do with that picture? Use it to sell other people in the team. But also, when things get tough, they replay that video and it keeps them going. Yeah, so they replay the video. The second thing that high performing people do, who go ballistic, learn from athletes, is be able to recover from setbacks. They can recover from setbacks. So things go wrong. Project debt to dive. You know, we don't get the sales this month, or something goes wrong. Yeah? Now, there's three responses to that. Number one, it does you in. Ugh. Energy, it's an energy vampire. <laughs> ah. That's at low level. Next level up, I can park it somewhere. I can sort of go, what the real flyers do, this is what they do. They take the defeat, they take the setback, and they turn it into rocket fuel They go, I'll show you. Because of the way they see things differently, entrepreneurs have a knack of spotting opportunities, and then, just going for it. A friend of mine started a business, he worked for, actually worked for Dixons in Manchester selling computers. You know, Dixons are the computer people. He bought a computer in 97. I just Ahmed to call this lad. And I just said, isn't it difficult to get onto the web at that day? Isn't it getting difficult to get on the internet? Isn't it really difficult? Our customers must have this problem. We need to fix it. His boss said, sell computers, don't do that. And being an entrepreneur, I just goes, right, I'll do it on a night then. So he gets a group of people together and they solve the problem again on the computer. Then he starts to sell it in this process in the Dixons. And the boss said, don't do that. Within six months, they've got sales of a billion. Eventually, they've got sales of six point something billion. And they sold out to what I do for 2.4 billion. So there we are, writ large. Find the customer problem. I can't get on the internet. Solve it. And sell it to everybody else. There it is. Yeah? I told this story to a guy who's selling wire. Wire is a commodity based in Sheffield. Wire. Wire. Needed to revitalise his business. He's in Australia with a rancher, a cattle rancher. He noticed this fellow's hands are all cut and ripped to shreds. He said, what have you been doing? He said, well, when your wire breaks, I've got to fix a fence otherwise I lose my cattle. He said, well, don't you have special? He said, well, I have gloves, yeah, but sometimes I'm, I just grab it and this is what happens. And then he said the magic phrase. This is the phrase that creates this opportunity to sell the larder and order a Porsche, or in this case, several Porsche factories. Yeah. In other words, mega rich. So he says to this guy, guy says to him, here's the phrase, if only somebody could find a way of joining wire quickly, cheaply and efficiently, they'd get very rich. So he decided to. So he came back to Sheffield, engineering department at the university, yeah, said to him, make me a device for joining wire quickly, cheaply and efficiently. They had 22 goals in 18 months, couldn't do it. You faced the call, this fellow, you said, have another go. The 23rd go. The gripple, here it is, the gripple. Worldwide patents on it, sales of 100 million, 80 million profit, sell the ladder on the Porsche, oh, fantastico. There it is, writ large. Chris Haskins, my, my wife worked for Chris Haskins, Northern Foods, Lord Haskins, crazy chairman of Northern Foods, really nice fella, Northern Foods based in Hull. Biggest supplier of food to M&S and other. He said, 30 years ago, we didn't do a penny worth of business with M&S. He said, I'm on the plane to Belfast with a fella from M&S. 
what do you do? What do you do? Chichi chat. He says, oh, well, we've got problems with our supply of trifles. Chris said, well, we, we'll have a look at that. He said, do you do trifles? He said, that's what I told me first white lie. Because we did jam and cream and sponge. <laughs> we just didn't put them all in the same box. You know what I mean? We kind of did all these bits. So he said, yeah, yeah, we kind of do. We'll have a look at it for you. So I, I get, he said, I get back to Hull. Entrepreneurs will recognise this. He said, I got all the development team together. I said, all right, stop what we're doing. We worked overnight. We bought sleeping bags in. We worked and worked and worked. And three days later, cracked it. I take it back to Baker Street. The guy goes, by the way, part of this process is speed. If you've got a headache, no point me giving you a pill six months down the track. If you've got a headache, you won't. It fixes. I took it back to him and he said, that's what I told me, second white lie. I said, what was your second white lie? Well, the guy said, it's fantastic, that, Chris. He said, I thought I was going to get an order, like, at 200. So I was ready for him. He says, can you make them? He says, yeah. He says, can you do 10,000 a week? He went, uh, yeah. He said, the rest is history.